Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I seek refuge in God from Satan the accursed in the name of God the beneficent the merciful. The battle of the camel was waged against Imam Ali peace be upon him. Imam Ali was never an aggressor in these wars. His Holiness was only acting in defense. So the question is, what led to the Battle of Camel, a battle that was imposed on Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and forced His Holiness to act in defense? This part of the history of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, which explains the whyness be behind the Battle of the Camel and what came after this historic battle concerning the behaviors of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and how His Holiness dealt with the enemies after his victory over them. It is all entirely brilliant show of Islamic virtue in the history of the early Islam, which is just like that of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Every bit of the story of the Battle of Camel and how Imam Ali approached this war since the beginning to the final moments of this battle, it is entirely a great representation of Islamic virtue and it is hard for people to listen to this story and not cry for how innocent Imam Ali is in history. This is how the Battle of the Camel began. After everyone pledged allegiance to Imam Ali, peace be upon him, a few groups of people refused to offer their allegiance. Imam Ali did not allow his followers to neither force these people into his allegiance nor bother them. However, among those people who willingly offered their allegiance to Imam Ali were Talha and Zubair. These two people offered their allegiance to Imam Ali with no pressure on them. However, these two people became resented with the policies of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, since His Holiness did not accept to favor these two people over other Muslims. So the two people, the two personalities, decided to travel to Holy Mecca under the pretext of visiting the House of God, the Kaaba. On leaving the city, Imam Ali told them the sentence uttered by Imam Ali, peace be upon him, needs thorough analysis. Imam Ali, as the leader of the Islamic government who was approached by the public to lead them, Imam Ali, as a leader of the Muslim community, said these sentences. After Talha and Zubair told the holy Imam that they're going to leave for Mecca. The Imam told them that you're not leaving for Mecca, you are leaving for conspiracy. Their ultimate plan of traveling to Mecca was to conspire against the government of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, assemble armies and wage wars against the nascent leadership of Imam Ali, peace be upon him. However, Imam Ali did not stop these two people from leaving to Mecca. 
It is because God wants His people, the people on the planet, on the earth, to be tested, to face trials and make decisions of righteousness or vice. These two people traveled to Mecca, they wrote letters to other people and spread lies and accusations against the Holy Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and they were successful to assemble a group of people around them, and then they mobilized their army to Basra. They tortured the governor, installed by Imam Ali, peace be upon him, in Basra. They did not kill the governor, however, they tortured him so horribly. Nowhere in history we can find any proven evidence of any fallible action by Imam Ali, peace be upon him. These two people, Talha and Zubair, had killed some followers of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and they had already broken their allegiance with the Holy Imam. Therefore, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, moved his army to Basra, and Imam Ali's army met the enemies at a place called Diqar, and it is still recognized with the same name. The two armies ranked against one another in this area. Some people joined Imam Ali's army from Kufa, and the Battle of the Camel was about to begin. Imam Ali was not seeking war. Imam Ali only acted in defense because the enemies drew their swords and acted in aggression. Ibn Abbas, the uncle of Imam Ali, was the emissary sent by this holy Imam to Talhab and Zubair to discuss them to discuss with them about the reasons behind their rebellion. Ibn Abbas brought, tried to reason with these two people through Holy Quran. However, they refused to listen to this person to the sound of reason and threatened to kill him. Ibn Abbas returned to Imam Ali saying that the enemies are not ready to listen to him. In military strategics, it is clear that if you just act in defense, you're going to be more prone to damages and losses. And this was very clear to Imam Ali, peace be upon him. However, Imam Ali did not choose to be the aggressive party. This is what the Holy Prophet of Islam and Imam Ali, peace be upon him, demonstrated in their time as the leaders of the Islamic community. Imam Ali then gave them a second chance, the enemies a second chance, and told everyone told his soldiers to seek for a volunteer in order to go and preach those people to the path of righteousness. The history should know that virtue precedes everything in the true Islamic thought. One young person volunteered to speak to the enemies. The Imam told this person that you will be killed because the enemies will not listen to you. And this person said, that's okay with me. 
I'm ready to speak to them. Like this, three other people volunteered for this job and they all were killed. They went to the enemies and talked to them. They tried to talk the enemies out of starting a war. However, they all were cowardly and brutally killed. The mother of one of these emissaries brought the body, of, the lifeless body of his son to Imam Ali while he, she was crying. However, Imam Ali gave the enemies another chance. Except for the Holy Prophet of Islam and Imam Ali, peace be upon him, we cannot see such a method and approach in a time of war. So Imam Ali decided to send another emissary to the enemies. Another person volunteered for the job and Imam Ali again told him that he's going to be killed by the enemies and the person did not reconsider and he went to the enemies, tried to tie them out of this war. This person tried to reason with the enemies by the verses of the Holy Quran, however, he was also killed. Again, Imam Ali did not allow his soldiers to start the war. Finally, hundreds of arrows from the enemy side were shot at the army of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and some people were killed. And then, at that point, Imam Ali called out for action and ordered his soldiers to act in defense. Before then, Imam Ali ordered his soldiers not to kill any prisoners, not to chase away those enemies that ran away from the battlefield. Usually when a side in the war is victorious, the killings begin. However, Imam Ali chose to not continue bloodshed after the war. Many people, practicing Muslims, people who stood to prayers and fasted, were killed on both sides, from the both sides. And this is the story of the Battle of the Camel. These realities should be introduced to the entire world. The Muslims should know about these facts. The Battle of Camel was waged between two parties, Imam Ali and Talha and Zubair. I hope that in the remaining days of the holy month of Ramadan, all young believers buckle up and make a firm decision to introduce the history of the Holy Prophet of Islam to the entire world so that the people of the world become familiar with this unique character. May God bless Muhammad and his pure household.